Hello, today we're going to look at this idea of isotopes and the meaning of that word and we're also going to look at something called relative atomic masses which we've looked at before but we're going to work out how these numbers are calculated depending on the abundance of the isotopes present in nature. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense right now perhaps but once we get through the video hopefully you'll understand what that means. So let's start off by looking at this idea of what we mean by isotopes. So before we do that, we've got a symbol and information about hydrogen and uh, from the periodic table. And from that, we can work out a number of protons, electrons, and neutrons, which we've done a couple of times now in previous videos. So we've got one proton, one electron, and in this case, no neutrons. And we can draw the atom, which looks like this, one proton and one electron. This is hydrogen. Now, in nature, we can find different versions of hydrogen and we know this is definitely hydrogen because it has one proton and remember the proton number identifies the element so it's, it's still hydrogen but we, what we also notice is there's another particle there and as we know in the nucleus that's a neutron we can actually find yet another version of hydrogen and in this case again we know it's hydrogen because it's got one proton but this also has two neutrons so we've got three different versions of hydrogen and each one of these is called an isotope. And what is different about them is that they have different numbers of, of neutrons. So they have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. And we could put that into a short definition. So isotopes are atoms of the same element, but with a different number of neutrons. And there we have three isotopes of hydrogen. Now, let's have a look at this diagram here. We've got three nuclei nuclei being the plural for nucleus. We haven't drawn the electrons in on these diagrams and we can work out which ones of these are isotopes. So for the first one, diagram A, we've got five protons and diagram B, we've got five protons. For C, we have six protons. So it seems that A and B are going to be the isotopes. We can calculate the number of neutrons as well by counting them up. We've got five for A, six for B, and again, six for C. So we can see that the first two elements, A and B, are isotopes of the same element. And in fact, we can identify that as boron, because if you look on your periodic table, you'll see boron has a proton number of five. Number C is carbon. Letter C is carbon because it has six protons. So we can do a bit more detail or look at a bit more detail about what we mean by isotopes. And we can look at what's the same about isotopes and what is different. So the first thing, as we know, is that we have the same number of protons. The thing that is also the same is the number of electrons. If we have five protons, we're going to have five electrons in the atom. Something else that's the same, though, is the chemical properties. In other words, the kind of chemical reactions that these isotopes take part in. And that is because chemical reactions depend on the number of electrons that an atom has and not the number of neutrons. What's different about isotopes? Well, we know we have a different number of neutrons, but that leads to one other difference as well. We are going to have a different atomic mass or a different relative atomic mass, or in fact, we can use the word mass number, which also means the same thing. They also have different physical properties. So not chemical properties, but physical properties. For example, density. Two isotopes would have a different mass if we had the same volume of them. One would feel slightly heavier than the other, even though the same volume, and that's a different density. Important to note also that some isotopes are what we call radioactive. Having extra neutrons makes them unstable, and they can be radioactive. Okay, so this is basically the details about isotopes, and you should know the similarities and differences between uh, different isotopes. What we're going to work out now is how relative atomic masses are calculated given the fact that there are different isotopes of atoms or of elements present in nature. So we've got the relative atomic mass of an element is an average value that takes into account the abundance of the isotopes of that element. So what does that mean? Well, if we look at chlorine, in nature we find there are two isotopes. There's chlorine 37 and chlorine 35. 
So what we do is we look at the what we call the abundance of each. In other words, how much of each is present. If the vast majority of chlorine found in nature was chlorine 35, you can imagine the mass number, the relative atomic mass would be closer to 35 than it would be to 37. But we need to know the amounts that are present. So chlorine is actually a common example. 75% of chlorine found in nature has a mass number of 35 and 25% has a mass number of 37. So how do we work out the relative atomic mass that we give chlorine on the periodic table? Well, we can do a little calculation and the calculation goes like this. We multiply the percent abundance of one of the isotopes and multiply it by the relative atomic mass of that isotope. And then we add that number to the percent abundance of the other isotope multiplied by its relative atomic mass. We add those two numbers together and we divide by 100 and that will give us a value of the relative atomic mass taking into account how much of each is present. Okay, so for this example, we would do 75 times 35 in brackets, add 25 times 37 Add those two numbers together, the answers that we get, divide it by 100, and we end up with 35.5, which is what you will see on your periodic table. And it's been calculated as we have just done there. Okay, so we can have a go at a couple of examples ourselves. So there's two examples here for you to do. You can only see one at the moment. Let's just get the other one up. There we go. So there's two examples. Give the video a pause, give those a go, and then see what answers you come up with. Okay, so we'll use our calculation from the previous slide. And what we'll get for copper, Cu, which is copper, is 69 times 63 in brackets plus 31 times 65. Work out those values, add them together, divide by 100, and you'll get 63.31. Okay, so this is the relative atomic mass based on the two percentages of each isotope given to us there. Magnesium, this looks slightly trickier because there's three isotopes, but actually the method is just the same. You're just going to have an extra set of brackets. So 79 times 24 plus 10 times 25 plus 11 times 26. Work out all those values, add them together, divide by 100, and we get 24 0.32. Okay, so based on the data we've been given, this is the relative atomic mass that we would use. In actual fact, in your periodic table, it's rounded to 24. And that's adequate for us to use to do our calculations. Okay, so that's our definition of isotopes. Very important that you know that in the detail that we've covered and how we do our calculations of relative atomic masses based on abundance of isotopes.